It's Tuesday, October the 31st. Uh, before I get into the fishing report, I'm sorry about not doing one last week. I was up at the Stockton Lake fishing an Oak Outdoors Championship. But I did uh, fish a couple days last week before I went up there. And uh, a lot of my fishing report, normally I like to do it on first-hand knowledge, you know, but I hadn't been on Table Rock very much in the last, you know, seven or eight days. Uh, tomorrow I leave for Lake of the Ozarks. we got an Anglers in Action Championship. But anyway, so I'm going to rely on uh, some information I've received from other people and what little bit I found out last week when I was out for a couple of days. But right now the lake level is at 913, which is two feet below normal winter pool. And the water temperatures are in, uh, you know, high 50s to uh, low 60s. All that rain and stuff we had this weekend cooled it down quite a little bit. And uh, the guys are in town for the Toyota uh, Championship. I wish all of them luck. This weather that came in is, I think it would have been better for them if it came in a week or so ago you know, cool that water down and uh, give them fish, a, a, you know, a chance to start moving up there shallow a little bit and to the backs of the creeks, but uh, they'll figure them out. They're some of the best fishermen in the country, so they'll catch them. But uh, looking at the past tournaments this weekend, I mean, the weights were pretty good, but it was nasty and, you know, Table Rock's probably one of the best foul weather lakes in the country. The nastier it gets, the, the better quality fish bite. But I think, you know, I know it stopped and it was brutal out there fishing with the wind and the rain, and I'm sure it was the same way here. But Cape Fair tournament took, uh, I think, 17 pounds to win. And uh, down to fourth place was, I think, right at 14 pounds. And uh, the fourth place finishers was uh, Miss Raylan from Extreme Outdoors, her and her boyfriend. And I talked to Raylan this morning, and. You know, she said they caught the majority of their fish on a whopper plopper and their best fish came on extreme glide bait up in the James River arm. And there was also uh, Sunday another uh, solo solo pro event out of Kimberling City and I think it took right at 14 pounds to win it. There was two or three stringers in the 14 pound range but then it dropped pretty quick. Uh, and I think probably with the weather that we had this weekend, the majority of the fish were caught shallow, you know, reaction baits. Uh, the rock crawler is probably one of the best fall baits on Table Rock and most of the Ozark lakes. Now, there, there are other crankbaits that'll work, but, you know, day in and day out, the rock crawler's kind of hard to beat. I like to throw a lot of crawdad patterns. And, uh, you know, a lot of what you're fishing is some of the fish will be on main lake bluffs and swings where the channel swings away from the bluffs. Uh, some will be on secondary points. It's uh, more about rock, it seems like, this time of year in the bay, you know. But if it's uh, clear and bluebird skies, the crankbait bite doesn't work as good. Usually wind and clouds, you know, is the best. Now. When on my guide trips last week, I threw I fished shallow for a couple of hours each morning, and we had good conditions, but we really struggled and we had to back out deep. I had to go to a bunch of different spots. We finally found groups of fish underneath shad, uh, right off of bluff ends and on the entrances to the creeks, and we caught them on a drop shot, and they were 30 to 45 feet deep, and. You know, we use several different worms, but whenever, like the chompers drop shot worm, uh, a striking uh, dream shot worked good in the morning dawn color, but seems like once we found the active fish, we could just uh, spot lock down and we caught several without even moving the boat, several good keepers. But like I say, we had to hit, you know, eight or 10 spots till we found the right combination of, of shad and then fish underneath them. Now, a lot of them fish have been moving back into creeks. Uh, the shad are, have been there, but I think with this cooler weather, you'll start finding the fish underneath the shad, you know, a little further back into creeks. And normally I'll go, like, say, Little Ants Creek, I'll go almost all the way to the back to where it's about 30 feet, and then start idling around and working my way out from there. And 
the, you know, looking in the treetops and looking for the schools of shad and a lot of different ways to catch them back there. Uh, you can use little underspins. You can cast to them with a live scope or uh, little swim baits. Uh, I like to use a, a three quarter ounce to one ounce white slab spoon or Rapala ice fishing jig. And you know, these baits you can throw on pretty heavy line. I usually throw them on FC Sun uh, 16 pound fluorocarbon. That way if I get them stuck in the trees, I can usually shake them out, but the baits are heavy enough, you don't need to finesse them. But normally on the drop shot or the little swim bait, I'll throw like a, a 12 pound plasma uh, braided line, sun braided line, and a you know, eight pound fluorocarbon leader. Seems to work better on the finesse baits, on the smaller baits. But as far as on the top waters, you know, uh, black or white buzz baits will work good. Uh, if I don't have much wind, I'll throw a little Cyclone Junior made by Spro. Uh, if I've got a lot of chop, I'll throw a, uh, the full size Waffle Plopper. And normally, instead of downsize, if I want to downsize to the Waffle Plopper, that's when I go to the little Spro Cyclone Junior. Seems to work, you know, real well for me. But you know, the fish are really scattered, which is you know kind of typical for this time of year but if you're fishing deep shad seems to be the main deal you know and some of the fish you might be in you know 80 foot of water fishing treetops that come up 30 to 40 feet you know come up 30 40 feet from the surface and that's where we we'll use a drop shot uh ice fishing jig or the spoon and you know a lot of times when i'm fishing the spoon i'm just not vertically fishing it's setting over the fish a lot of times when we're back in them creeks, you might notice a, a school of shad, you know, 60 or 70 foot away from the boat, and I'll take and cast the spoon, you know, watching it on live scope, uh, letting it go through the bait, and then jerk it and yo-yo it underneath the bait. And the same with the with the ice fishing jig. Uh, this time of year, you can catch some good quality largemouth doing that, but it's uh, you spend a lot of time looking. You know, a lot of time idling and a lot of time on the troll motor looking for the, the right combination of bait and structure. And, you know, I understand there's a little bit of a football jig bite. The days that it gets real slick, you might want to tie on a 5 8 3 quarter ounce football jig or even a Carolina rig. If you're up in the river, you want to fish uh, some of these flats that come right up to the main channel, uh, whether it's a rock change or, or, you know, if you can find brush on the bottom. You know, down lake, uh, a lot of the bluff end seems to be the most consistent for me, whether it's uh, drop shotting or fishing a jig. It seems like any place where the, the channel swings in or out from a bluff seems to be the, the key places that we're getting bites. But, you know, I think it's still going to be a struggle. I know the weather and the cool temperature is great, but... Uh, my experience is it usually takes the fish, you know, five or six days to get kind of acclimated to the cooler temperatures and, and start to move. And they don't seem like they move right away. So I'm thinking by, you know, next week sometime, if it'll stay fairly cool at night, the crankbait bite, rock crawler, uh, should really get better. And also don't be afraid to throw a spinnerbait, you know, especially if you get the right conditions or a chatterbait, the same place as you're throwing a crankbait. Uh, some days they like, you know, something just below the surface with a little flash. You just have to mix it up. You know, this is the time of year where, you know, people talk about junk fishing. Uh, really comes into play because you'll have seven or eight rods on the deck. You might pick up a jig and, you know, flip a lay down if it's got enough water on it. Or, you know, boat docks uh, can be really good in that from the bank out to about 15 to 20 feet. But then when you get to the outside of the boat dock, if it's got 25, 30 feet, you might have to pick up a, a, a buzz bait or a, a whopper plop or something, throw it by the corners of the docks. It seems like it's hard to stay on one pattern to consistently catch keeper fish. You gotta really bounce around and throw a lot of different baits. So again, I wanna wish all the, the guys in the Toyota uh, good luck this weekend. I think somebody's gonna win $200,000, which is a pretty big purse. So until next week, uh, good luck, good fishing.